Drought refers to a variety of situations, but its actual meaning can vary greatly, depending on the season, location, and watershed where it occurs. Browning vegetation in a Connecticut watershed might indicate a drought's onset, but in a Tucson, Arizona watershed, it would be highly unusual not to have parched vegetation. A month of no precipitation would be very unusual in Virginia's Holston River watershed, likely triggering drought conditions but it would hardly be noted in the watersheds near Las Vegas, Nevada. Below average river and reservoir levels would indicate drought conditions anywhere from a hydrologic point of view, but reservoirs can remain low long after soaking rains have begun to revive the vegetation in a watershed. If you are struggling to keep your lawn and garden from withering in an unusually prolonged dry spell, you may very well call it a drought. But what if the water levels in your local river are normal at the same time your grass is brown? Does it mean there is no drought? The answer is, it depends. True or false, drought is a normal, recurrent event that occurs in virtually all climate zones throughout the world. The correct answer is true. You may consider droughts to be rare and random. They are actually common climate episodes, which can occur in both the driest desert and the wettest rainforest. They can occur in any season or have multi-year durations. As this chart shows, some part of the United States has experienced severe or extreme drought every year since 1895. Drought results from any extended shortfall in water relative to a long-term average balance between water inputs and water withdrawals for a given area. Drought has meteorological, agricultural, hydrologic, and socioeconomic dimensions. Meteorological drought is usually expressed in terms of below normal precipitation for some time period. Less precipitation means reduced infiltration, runoff, and groundwater recharge. Agricultural droughts are more closely tied to soil moisture deficits, which have the direct impacts on crop germination and growth. Plant stress is not limited to crops, of course, and may include natural vegetation throughout a watershed. Plant diseases may increase, along with insect infestations. As plants succumb to these effects, topsoil can become exposed, resulting in increased erosion. Hydrologic drought causes reduced stream flow and groundwater depletion, and usually occurs on longer time scales than agricultural and meteorological droughts because these impacts take longer to manifest. For example, a precipitation shortfall may rapidly deplete soil moisture, affecting crops almost immediately, but stream and reservoir levels may still be maintained by groundwater flow for an extended period of time. Likewise, a single rainstorm may be enough to replenish soil moisture, yet have little impact on drought-depleted groundwater reserves. In fact, floods do occur during droughts. If the rainfall rate is high enough, the soil cannot absorb all the rain, no matter how dry it was to begin with. This photo, taken in Fort Worth, Texas during the height of the Dust Bowl, shows a local flood episode that probably had a minimal impact on the overall drought. Although climate and weather are primary drought factors, human actions can intensify and even cause drought effects. Both increased demand for water and reduced supply due to contamination of freshwater reserves increase the frequency of water shortages even when there have been no changes in precipitation patterns. The impacts of drought can have very different appearances depending on where you are. In normally moist climates, like the southeastern U.S., drought conditions may appear relatively lush. In normally dry regions, like parts of the West, normal conditions may appear relatively parched and barren. Many western watersheds rely principally on snowmelt from the mountains to keep drought at bay. Alpine snowfall patterns have a greater influence on drought cycles than rainfall in the lower valleys. But behind these varied faces of drought, there are common impacts no matter where the drought occurs. These impacts can be described from economic, social, and environmental points of view. Let's focus on the environmental impacts of drought. First, consider some of the direct and indirect effects on the watershed system. These may include reduced soil moisture, reduced water levels in lakes, reservoirs, and wetlands, reduced stream and spring water flow, 
increased groundwater depletion and land subsidence, and water quality impairments such as increased salinity, temperature, dissolved oxygen, turbidity, etc. These effects have further impacts on plants and animals within the watershed, including plant stress and increased vulnerability to insects and disease, loss of natural vegetation, croplands, and forests, habitat loss for wildlife, and reduced biodiversity. In turn, these impacts can produce further troubles, increased fire frequency and severity, increased soil erosion, and diminished air quality due to smoke, dust, and other particulates. All of these impacts can also translate to a broad range of health, economic, and social effects, even in communities far removed from the areas experiencing drought conditions. True or false, one extreme precipitation event is enough to end a drought in most parts of the U.S. The correct answer is, it depends, because ending a drought is a complicated and variable process. For a hydrologic drought to end, the moisture required to balance water supply and demand for a given watershed must be brought back to normal or above normal levels. But normal levels vary greatly by region and season. For example, imagine droughts of equal magnitudes affecting watersheds in a dry region and a wet region. Since more precipitation normally falls in the wet region, more precipitation would be required to end the drought. This chart shows three-month precipitation amounts needed to end a moderate drought during the summer. This chart is based on climate averages. Note that six inches or less of precipitation is sufficient to end such a drought for large areas of the western U.S., while 12, 15, or over 18 inches would be required to end a moderate drought in the eastern U.S. Seasonal differences are also important because precipitation, evaporation, and transpiration patterns often vary by season. For example, in many areas there is much less water loss through evapotranspiration during the winter than during the summer. This is due to colder temperatures, snow-covered ground, frozen lakes, and dormant vegetation. So, it may take less precipitation to end a drought during the winter in places like the Northeast or the High Plains. In other areas, like the West Coast, where winter is the wet season, winter precipitation is vitally important for building snowpacks and replenishing groundwater reserves. This chart shows three-month precipitation amounts needed to end a moderate drought in December. Note the changes in Northern California. While three inches or less were sufficient to end the drought in June, more than 18 inches are required to end it in December. But the quantity of precipitation needed to end a drought is only part of the story. It's also crucial to know the probability that a drought-stricken watershed will actually receive that amount of precipitation. To understand this, let's look at an example from April 2006. This chart shows drought conditions as they were at that time. Many watersheds in the southwest were suffering moderate to extreme drought. This chart shows how much precipitation was required to end drought conditions. Note that 3 to 9 inches were needed for much of Arizona and New Mexico. How do these moisture deficits compare to normal precipitation amounts? To find out, we look at another chart which shows the percent of normal precipitation over three months required to end current drought conditions. Note how more than 200 percent of normal precipitation was needed in much of Arizona. How likely are such amounts of precipitation? You can get a sense from this final chart showing probabilities that required amounts would fall within the ensuing three months. Note that there was 0 to 3 percent chance the droughts would end in many watersheds of Arizona and Texas, while watersheds in northern New Mexico and the Texas Panhandle had an 18 percent or better chance of receiving enough rain to end their droughts. If you live in Arizona, you are probably not surprised to see that widespread rainfall accumulations of 3 to 9 inches are highly unlikely in late spring and early summer.